All right, Michael, what are we doing today, mate? All right, today is going to be a big day for Nathan and I. It's going to be a little bit of a tedious, mundane day in some aspects because there's going to be a lot of wiring. But today, what we're hoping to do is get this thing ready, basically all wired up, finish off every or as much as the little <laughs> last things that we need to finish on this thing. Because in a couple of days, the engine builder who built this engine is going to come here and he's going to try and start this thing for the first time. He wants to be here for the first startup because he's the one who built the engine and wants to make sure it all goes right and everything. Because let's be honest. I wouldn't trust us either. No. This engine costs a lot of money, most expensive engine we've ever worked on, so we don't want to screw with that. We'll let the professional start this one up. We're happy to stand by and watch that happen. And yeah. at the end of the day, not our problem, something goes wrong. <laughs> but before we get to that stage, we have a hell of a lot of work to do. We have to tackle wiring. I know a few episodes ago I said I would probably do all this wiring off camera because, you know, wiring is sort of just takes a lot of time, but I didn't do that. I ran out of time. I haven't had time to sit down and do that. We've been busy trying to stuff single overhead cams and Cortinas. <laughs> But the good thing is we have some awesome wiring diagrams that were provided to us by a viewer. I'm sorry, mate, I cannot remember your name, but uh, you are a lifesaver. These diagrams, I don't know where they've come from, but they literally, it's like wiring for dummies. Look, that's a battery. That's an alternator regulator. That's a starter motor. That's ignition switch. Tells us all the colors. The wiring on this thing should be pretty simple because it's basically a GT replica wiring diagram so all the colors should match so now even nathan is going to get on the tools and we're going to start trying to wire this thing up because it's basically it's like paint by numbers but for wiring wiring by numbers it really is so that is the goal for today we're going to try and get this thing basically ready to turnkey and fire it up for the first time in a couple of days which hopefully you'll see at the end of this episode if all works out but it never does so we'll see what happens. <laughs> let's get into it shall we yeah let's do it what we're going to start is with the engine because that is the most important right now. We don't need to worry about rear indicator lights, but the loom is there if we want to get to it, but we want to focus on engine. Yes. Um, we want to be able to bump the key and we hear the starter go. Brr. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I might, I might look at the alternator because, well, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> you do that side. It looks like there's a couple more colors there that I don't want to look at. Yeah, filming wiring is, is really difficult. Yeah, it's pretty boring, but we'll try and make a montage out of it or something. Yeah, I'll do something cool for the camera. <laughs> and, oh, look at that, look at that. Easy as one, two, three. Thirty-eight does not go to the ultimate. All right, have fun with that. <laughs> Wiring always makes it look so messy straight away. Yeah, I know. It's so ugly. We'll clean it all up later. Obviously, this is just to rough it in, and then as long as we know where all the wires go and works, then I can tape it all up later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put, because we don't want to guise out the back of the engine, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna put the oil pressure sensor in, um, because we would have forgotten about this, I reckon. Yes. We were lucky that we saw the hole the other day and thought, hey, why is there a hole there? there? <laughs> <laughs> this is where the dizzy goes in the hole. And... If it wants to go in. Don't strip it. You are so on the angle right now. Oh, you might as well be know, I don't go from that side because I'm right-handed, you know. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to go on an angle. What? It's actually on an angle. No, it's not. Yeah, the thread's on an angle. Look at that. See? It's screwing in. Look at that. Wow, the things you learn. The things you do for love. I don't know how I'm gonna do it up. <laughs> Is it like an oil filter? You just hand tight? <laughs> I was thinking it's probably a case of, you know, how... Um, the Dizzy on the HQs has the special I'm gonna 960. have to cut down the spanner. Yeah. What do I need? I need a 14. Yeah, the box is somewhere. A 14 is 916. Which is the HQ one, so is just, it? yeah. Oh. Especially tool cabinet. Oh no, it's ring. I can't get around it. I need an open end. Oh, well damn, we've only had the other end of the spanner. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Dad, why didn't you give us the other side of this spanner all those years ago? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's time to make a sacrifice. Alright. This is our sacrificial box. I wonder if there's one already cut. Nine sixteenths. So I need the opposite end. We might as well just weld them back together. The things you do for Falcon. <laughs> You 
don't believe in leverage. There's not a lot of room back there though. Yeah, okay, that's short. It is short. <laughs> We're, work. we're getting carried away here. I have faith. I know, we have so much to do. Ding, ding. Oh, look at that, mate. Does it fit? Works perfect. Imagine it was the wrong size spanner. There we go, got it. <laughs> Lucky I made it this small. Uh, lovely. There's a geyser out the back, we know this was too short. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to plug that in? Yes. Is it already, does that have a thingy on it? So you take the nut off that was on it because you don't need it. Oh, is it just using, um... It's this dude here. Oh, that dude. And just basically goes straight onto the thread. Onto the thread? Thanks, bro. Cool. All right, that's that done. What else is there, Michael? Do you want to put the ignition barrel in? Yeah, all right, I'll do that. So now, we can put this in. You know, though, the one thing I might say is maybe put this in first. What's that? That is the uh, driving light switch. Oh, we got to have to drill a hole for that, didn't we? Yeah, we got to drill a hole. Oof. Yeah, right, I'll do so that. So you do that first, drill the hole above it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love these little bezels, they're gorgeous. They are good, aren't they? Yeah, Dr. White's. <laughs> <laughs> Flicky flicky? Flicky flicky. When you want Dr. Light, you got that nurse on call. <laughs> cool. Alright, now on to the one that I should have been doing. Alright, so I'm pretty sure there's like a big ring thing that goes on at the back of this and it bolts into it, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. Yeah. So that should be pretty easy to find. Yeah. Steady. <laughs> Come on. Let's go in. Such a strange spot for an ignition, isn't it? Yeah. I quite like it though. Looks good. Well, this is going to be my home for a little while. So what are you going to do? Are you going to plug everything in? Yeah, I'm going to try now to plug everything in. This will probably be a lot easier if the dash was out. I'll see how far I can get. If it has to come out, it's going to come out. White and red. been looking at that I did run the rear part of the harness it's all plugged in um, you got the number plate wiring there uh, and then that uh, that one looks as if it goes to the door switches and then the fuel sender wire is also ran through the floor so we've, once that goes up on the hoist we can just simply plug that in send a unit um, but now I wait <laughs> <laughs> I will put this bezel in, it goes around the hole. Alright, well the dash is back together. Um, I haven't managed to hook up too many things. I, I got a few things hooked up. I think I've got all these gauges hooked up. I need to actually figure out what lights go to where. I can sort of get to somewhere behind the dash. So once this is all sort of running, I can actually go through and actually sort of check all the wires, figure out what they are, because so I can only go so far with this wiring diagram. And there's a few extra wires in there, which I don't know why they are, and I don't know whether it's because maybe the wiring loop that he bought has been like upgraded to more modern stuff. I don't know, I need to figure all that out yet. But it's back together for the minute. I need to just check, do a few more little things, and then we can sort of push this over and get it up on the hoist, and we start doing all the other stuff while I continue sort of messing with the wiring. But we're getting there, slowly, slowly. Yeah, it's just one of those days. Yeah. Today's taking a bit of time. A lot of head scratching in this thing. But, we'll see how we go. What are you doing? I'm going to just make the battery cables. Uh, Michael's trying to find the... Um, what is it again? Oh, I'm just trying to play with all the wiring <laughs> to get this thing started. He's kind of multiple tasking wiring right now. Um, so I thought I might as well make the few little cables. So I'll just show you. So we've got to just run the ground, which I'm just going to run to that bolt down there. And then we just got to run a short little power lead right to that. Yep. Uh, and then the rest we'll have to make on the hoist so we can run it. Yeah. <laughs> Extreme! <laughs> Do you want me to hold 
something. Uh, it's all good. I got a little system. You got a system. <laughs> you just need a bench. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel this would be like the equivalent of like you, me being on the welder all day. I feel weird to be honest. I feel like I haven't made, made enough brackets today. <laughs> Good, isn't it? I can see why you like making them all the time. It's fun, <laughs> isn't it? It's fun. Ah, you like the heat gun, huh? I like the heat gun. Ooh, very nice, very nice. All right, so Nathan has made our positive fire, which looks good. Now, for the sake of things, before we move this over to the, the other bay, to hoist bay, we're just gonna put on the earth. We've got no fuses, no nothing in it, but we're just gonna put the earth on and see if this thing don't light up like a Christmas tree or set fire to it <laughs> because we just want to see like what actually has power and what doesn't yeah because we've got no fuses the fuse this box in this thing I've never seen one like this they're like a between small and large size so we need to get the actual fuses for it but I'm Make waiting sure on nothing there. sizzling yeah pretty much ready? yeah <laughs> the most unsure of yeah in the world just tap it Okay, we'll get on. Let's turn the ignition on, see what happens. Get ready to pull that off. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, well, it doesn't look like you've got any power at all. I was going to say, I didn't hear anything. No. Nah. Nothing click, nothing. Yeah, we'll try bump the starter. And I reckon it's because there's no fuses in it. Nothing. No, we got no fuses at all. That's okay. Okay, so... Nathan and I had a little bit of a play around with electronics at the moment off camera trying to figure this stuff out. We're missing a lot of fuses, we don't, so we don't have those fuses so there's probably a lot of the system that isn't working in a minute. But we know that we have power to the coil and it looks like we have constant 12 volts to the coil as well too. So it looks like there may not actually be a resistance, a resistance wire in this thing that will drop it down to 9 volts like it's supposed to do when it's running. That's a good thing, maybe it's when Rodney bought the wiring loom for this thing maybe you can opt to have like if you're going to put an electronic distributor in it so they already take that out for you who knows i need to talk to rodney about that so that's okay on the starter solenoid we can't get a signal to trigger at the minute through turning the key we're not exactly sure why not the biggest problem at the moment i can just jerry rig that on the day to try and crank it and then i can try to find that out what's going on at a later stage but what we need to do now is because we're running out of time before we finish the day gonna move it over to hoist bay put it up in the sky I'm gonna pump some brakes, get the brakes working, because we do not want to start this car without having brakes working in this thing, because in case it takes off or anything like that, we need to be able to stop it. So that, our, our heads hurt, it's been a big day. Um, so anyway, let's get it over there and play some brakes, our favorite thing in the world, eh? Well, let's do it. All right, let's do these brakes. <laughs> have we mentioned we ate brakes? Drive the boat. Up. Up. Down. So we've sprung a leak in the back here. Maybe we put it on. Alright. Chased a bunch of leaks. I think we've sold them all. Let's see if it works. We're done. Done? How's it feel now? Feels good, man. Did we mention we hate brakes? <laughs> Alrighty, so it is a new day now. Uh, it's cold morning, it's early in the morning, and today we're going to try fire this thing up. So we have Ron here, the fellow that has built the engine and many 351s in the past, and the gearbox as well too. I did a bit of work the other day. There's been a few late nights just trying to get this thing wired up. It is wired up now pretty much to get this thing firing. I've checked it, I know I've got spark. The starter motor does crank. I did bump it the other day and it is working. We've just got it working by the key now as well too. A few little things we've got to finish off, like we've got to chuck in the alternator regulator, which Rodney's just picked up today. So that's just, we're gonna plug that in and that should work. I've done the earth strap to it as well too. So it's got an earth strap. I've run the wires to the starter motor. Ron's just been filling the car be worth of, uh, with some fuel. So that hopefully it'll fire up no issues. And then we should be ready to turn the key in this thing. We'll find out what this thing sounds like very shortly, I reckon. So let's plug this in and put some water in it and then should be good to go, I reckon.
What are we doing, eh? Um, he's just adjusting the timing because he watched the Sandman episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we're pretty much ready to fly right after that. Yeah, we're going to prime the fuel pump, or prime the fuel lines and yeah. go from there. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah I'm excited. excited. <laughs> and you're not the best we did, though? What? We're not our job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. This is a great idea, I never thought of this. It just saves a lot of time. No petrol coming out the back. There we go. Oh yeah, we got fuel. Shit, that works well. <laughs> Why did we do that on every time? I know, it's so good. This is what happens when you learn from professionals. <laughs> All right, so what we just did then is we just basically primed the fuel system. Yeah, we pressurized the tank so it pushes the fuel forward because it's got nowhere else to go but out the out the line. Yeah, we say we, Ron thought it. Ron, Ron's idea, we just... Great idea. Though. Yeah. All right, ready to go. Let's see, see what happens. Good. Yep. Hold it. No. Try it again. Yep. No, no spark. No spark. No spark. All right, so we've come up with a little bit of an issue. We've tried to fire this thing over and over and over again. We did a little bit off camera as well too because we're all getting our thinking caps on trying to figure out what's the issue here. What do we know? It's turning over fine. Looks like we've got a right voltage. Starter motor works and everything. It has fuel, plenty of fuel. We know that's got fuel. It does have spark, but not a great spark. So we've tested it um, with a couple of spark plugs and we've got a spark, but it's not really strong. We changed the coil over three or four times to all the different coils that we've got laying around here didn't make much of a difference, still a very weak spark. The distributor is working, but it seems to be very, very faint. We even pulled the distributor out, put it on the bench and sort of bench tested it with what the rudimentary bench test kit that we sort of <laughs> set up over there. Again, still no, still not great. We don't know exactly what's going on. So what we think it might be something in the distributor itself. So we'll pull the distributor out. Ron's taking that back. He's gonna have a look at it, bench test it, maybe even come back with that and another distributor to compare the pair, see if we get a better spark, because that's really all it can be, but it is really strange that we didn't even get a Yeah. Not even a titter, just nothing at all. This is the joy of trying to start cars, I guess, so. We'll have a think about it, have a play with it, try a different distributor, see if that could be the problem, and come back again another yeah, day, Yeah, come back again. It's all we can do. Yeah. All right, until then. All right, so it's been a little bit of a mission. <clears throat> what we're doing at the moment is we're swapping the Dizzy back over to the original Dizzy that we had on this thing because Ron Linnitus is his Dizzy that we knew worked to get this thing to fire. We managed to get it to run on that Dizzy and we even checked our core. We got our core working as well too. What it seems like it was, as stupid as it was, this is those stupid things that always happen. That harmonic balancer has multiple timing marks on it. Was it three sets? Three sets of marks. Three sets of marks on it and we were looking at the wrong ones by the looks of it. So we reckon we weren't even 180 degrees out, we were 90 degrees out. And we've all said, we've never seen an engine, not even not even a puff due to timing. And yet here we are, we didn't even get anything. But as soon as we went back to, we, we triple checked top dead center, matched up our timing marks, bang, went straight right up. Yeah. So we're trying our Dizzy now, hopefully this works. And if this works, then we're golden. So yeah. let's see what happens. Done. All right, ready? Yep. <laughs> That's how beautiful, yeah, a glossy paint is now better than It runs! <laughs> we finally got there. We finally got to hear this thing kick into life. Sounds good. It sounds actually really good, doesn't it? Does it does sound really good. Um, Ron's happy with it. He says it sounds really good. Did all the running procedure earlier. So yeah, 
<laughs> that's pretty much it really yeah i only hope you like the sound of it because you weren't here to enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> but these things happen so yeah i guess from here it's button it up finish off those last little things obviously i have a bunch of wiring that i need to attend to which will be great fun but we'll get there in the end i'm sure of it what do you want to say no it's finally good to see you running yeah, <laughs> yeah it's no. a nice achievement yeah so it's good that was a big effort. A big thank you, obviously, to Ron from Blueprint Engines for coming out and helping start this engine up. Like we said, he was the man who built this engine, so he wanted to be here when he started it. And honestly, lucky that he was because his, his knowledge was really awesome to actually try and figure out what was wrong with this thing. And it's good to watch someone that actually knows what they're doing when it comes to a first startup <laughs> of an engine like this. So we learned a few trick, tips and tricks this time around as well, too. So thanks, Ron. Thanks for coming out. One of those things, you know, seeing that harmonic balance being 90 degrees out, whatever it is, we never expected that to be an issue. We've never seen it before, like where it wouldn't even putter mm. uh, with timing out. But I guess this engine just did that. So anyway, I hope you've liked the episode. If you have, consider liking and subscribing. It really does go a long way to help supporting the channel and keeping it alive. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you can head on over to the website where you can buy a bunch of merch, hoodies, t-shirts stickers for those asking about the thread testers there will be more coming in the near future we're just trying to get through the backlog from the previous order that went through because we were not expecting to get that influx of orders so we're trying to get them done now because they are built by us by hand well my brother by hand anyway like we said we still have heaps to do in this thing before we say sayonara to it so we should probably push it back in there and get to work i suppose y yes let's All right. do it see you in the next episode Can we fix the firing order up on this thing? Yeah. Because I really hate for the engine builder to get here and be like, what the flip is going on here? <laughs> you guys put the carb view reader on backwards. <laughs> that has every possibility that that could happen, <laughs> yes. He's going to be like, Rodney, why did you get these two nufties to put this together? And then I'll just be like, oh, I don't know, man. I'll just work here. <laughs> Clearly, we're not the first one to be here. The key to the nine in your cupboard? What I want to know is, what are you cutting up? That you have to cut that off. What are yeah, you using? Yeah, I know. A one inch one off. Here's your key, sir. You've officially you. been pimped. <laughs> Why is my car only half done, man? <laughs> Guys, we're <laughs> oil. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad feeling that this thing's not going to fun. <laughs> this Red Bull can here looks like it's going to be looks like a sponsorship deal. <laughs> I wish. Imagine being sponsored by Red Bull. They'd probably make us do some real crazy shit like launch an XY into space. Yeah. Right now, I'd be quite happy to do that. Because I hate brakes. I really, really hate doing brakes. Breaks my heart. My achy, breaking heart. <laughs> so our burnout hatch was left open. <laughs> Just to let it steam up a little bit. Sauna. Let's see if it moves under its own power. Oh, hang on. There's no accelerated pedal, so we can see what happens. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's that's enough. <laughs> that's all we need to see. <laughs>